All right. Well, welcome to Diamond Dialogue, the chat room interviews show. Joining me for this episode is none other than host of shows for, such as Hacking the System, Scam School, Night Attack, Cord Killers, Weird Things, and uh, probably forgot something too, but Brian Brushwood. How are you doing, man? Yeah, man. Apparently, I'm not doing enough. Let's add a couple more to the fire. Let's yeah, yeah. Uh, throw in, uh, I guess, the stage show and uh, in whatever secret project I'm cooking up right now. Well, you've always got something, right? Uh, too many things. It's <laughs> insane. I, I can barely keep up. Yeah, I know how that is. It's every time I think I've, I've got too many things, something else comes to mind. Oh, hey, you know, I could do this. And this would be fun to do. Let's, let's get on this project now. That's the problem, right, is we all have a tendency to overestimate our, our imaginary available time in the future. So we make promises, you know, we all write checks with current versions of ourselves that future versions of us have to cash. Yeah, exactly. And, and future me is terrible at time management. So uh, I've, come, I've come to learn that that, that, that guy sucks. So. <laughs> <laughs> Pass me, god damn you! <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I have that, that happens all the time, so... Well, anyway, welcome to the show. And uh, so, first off, uh, we kind of know the origins of your chat handle, Schwood. It's part of your 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 last name. But who is the first to to like refer to you as as such? Oh God, I gotta. I, you're gonna pull this out of me. Um, uh, <laughs> I realized in high school that I was like, oh my God, the last part of Brushwood is Schwood. That's kind of cool. But the way it became a handle was uh, I went to college and we signed up for intramural uh, flag football. And there was, you know, we were making up plays, you know, one dorm versus another. Oh, there sure. were five people on a team and uh, we were making up plays. I was like, oh, but what if we faked this out and then did a handoff and then threw the ball over here? And he's like, great, what do we call it? And I'm like, uh, I don't know, call it Schwood one. Sure. And then something about like that, that is all I said. And then they, they called the play Schwood one. And like, that was enough. To, to all of a sudden everyone called me Schwood, which for good or for ill, because like new people would come into the dorm and uh, and, and I'd introduce myself and they were like, uh, oh yeah, you're that guy. They call it, they don't call you Brushwood though. They call you like, uh, is it Schmuck? Is that, or something like that? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, no, Schwood. Uh, close enough, right. Six one yeah. and a half dozen the other. <laughs> but, and, and when domains were hot and available, you know, I couldn't believe that I was like, oh, it would be hilarious for me to get schwood.com. But then uh, what happened was is I grabbed it and I later grabbed brianbrushwood.com. But it occurred to me that when it came time to book stuff, you know, to get people to come to my website, if I said go to brianbrushwood.com, most people have a hard enough time even remembering brushwood and not bushwood. So it's right. like there's there's too many there's two ways to misspell Brian. Uh, then you know they could spell bushwood instead of brushwood, and then people like to put a C in there for some random ass reason. Oh, the so all of a sudden I realized it was faster to just say s h w o o d dot com, and so that's why it stuck as the, as the URL, and from there, you know, it, it it it's easy and short to type. Yeah, well, and you picked letters that are phonetically easy to hear, you know, like uh, and know what they are. Uh, my my mine falls into the the problem of Tinvec having N's and V's, which are B's yeah, and yeah, M's. If you don't think and, of and, you know. and, and, and a weird number of both, right? Like there's there's no K at the end. I I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's so. It's at least unique, but uh, and short. You know, it's only seven letters long, but uh, you know, there's there, there are problems still. So, eh, do what you can, right? <laughs> sure, sure, absolutely. So we we know you're all into tech and and magic, of course, and stuff. So apart from technology and magic and being a general nerd, what what's your favorite kind of you know outside of that activity? What do you, what do you like to do when you? Man, I wouldn't. I ten years ago, I never would have believed this is what's going to come out of my mouth. But uh, but uh, it would have been video games ten years ago. Nowadays, I think it's fitness, man. Really? I'm just really into trying to keep this equipment in shape and getting out and and working out and trying to you know trying to fuss over you know this two pounds here or there. Yeah, that's and you know fitness has become like a almost like a, a geek culture thing. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of people that are really into you know body hacking and in, in general just keeping yourself healthy because i guess you know we sit around a lot and don't do jack shit so you know. well, yeah but and, and if you read you know i'll poke in on the the reddit fitness forums or whatever and it's amazing to see this clinical detachment people refer to when it comes to essentially programming their own body you know and it's like we're all so different i think the next 10 years are going to be just extraordinary as far as figuring out uh you know what we're all capable of doing oh yeah that's and what well, and and the more we learn too is it's always like um 
I don't know. It's, it's kind of like the, the Moore's law of, of everything doubles and stuff. I feel that way about information. You know, the more information that we learn, the more we realize we don't learn, which drives us to learn that information even more, you know, and it's a, it's a, a pretty awesomely vicious cycle as far as, as far as that goes. Well, and it's also, it's not only that we learn, but other people are learning and the speed at which we become accustomed to getting new information just gets faster and faster. And so the expectation right. is, well, if nobody else is learning this, I'm going to run this trial myself and I'll report my results. I mean, it's it's astonishing how much, you know, you, you read back to scientists in the 19th century, these people who are, you know, uh, figuring out these these amazing theorems of physics and and so on. And uh, you realize that someone had to run an experiment four or five times. Then they had to write a letter that took up to three weeks to reach some other guy who's running a similar set of experiences. Like that's so slow. There's so much time lost in just transitioning from one project to another or one player in the game to another. And nowadays that's all over. Everything's practically instantaneous, which is phenomenal. It, it, it just the, the pace at which innovation can happen is extraordinary. Oh yeah, I, I agonize over two day shipping. I mean, oh come on! You I mean you can't have it to me here in thirty forever. minutes or less? I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> thirty minutes is too long. Where's my damn replicator? You know, Absolutely. Like... Well, well, I mean, to be honest, it's it's actually you know it's on its way from MakerBots and 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 the like. You know, it's like once we get used to the idea of actually printing out our own uh, physical objects. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's all coming. Well, and, and the leaps there to to once we can take take things that, that, that we do with atoms in laboratories and take huge, you know, dangerous experiments of splitting them apart and recombining them, that's slowly working its way there too, because as that science gets no, more known, we can start just storing, um, oh, okay, here's a bucket of oxygen, here's a bucket of uh, hydrogen, let's just uh, push these together and now we got some water in a, in a glass here, you know, and so the, yeah, was, the more we was, can do that. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about uh, – I forget why, but I, I, I was thinking about the movie King Corn, and, and they talk about how you know all of corn is run by a conglomerate of you know where they have um, uh, specialized strains where it's like you buy the seeds, but they won't reproduce, so you can't make more of the seeds. Yeah, so you keep having to buy seeds or whatever. Crazy. But I realized like if it's not already happening, we got to be like 20 minutes away from uh, somebody open sourcing – you know their own biological strains of corn seeds, right? right. I mean, it seems like uh, like you'd be able to uh, just make uh, in a lab at home, make that available, share your results, and start you know right through the U.S. mail sending samples to other people. You know, in a way, that's kind of what heirloom tomatoes are. You know, they're an older uh, older uh, uh, sort of stock of, of tomato that that's you know hardier and flavor more has more flavor than than the stuff that has been bred into what we we end up having today. So. So that's, that's what people did with the heirloom tomatoes. And of course, people sell the seeds and whatnot. But, you know, that somebody found that again, started reproducing them, gave more seeds and just, you know, kind of Johnny Appleseed. Didn't even Apple know that, man. Thing. But, yeah. but and that's what's great, man. We're looking at the, the Linux of, of genetic information, uh, open sourcing genetic modification any oh, minute. Yeah. And, and, I, and I love that, too. And I love that Linux is like a thing that people know now and that open source is a, a movement that people don't just equate with hacking and and you know stuff like that it just it fringe give, stuff that yeah. the, the fact that, that open source can also be easy for you know ui purposes for anyone to use right yeah it's 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 really awesome in that way and so um well we also know speaking going back to, to tech items that you're an avid twitter -er, tweet tweet person um so <laughs> to a fault man i've got to get away <laughs> right so who, who's your favorite twitter account that you follow maybe for for insight or just for general hilarity but what's what's your favorite one you follow you know what i uh, here let me take a look uh, there's a few people that i always bother to note what they're writing uh gary witta tends to do really good stuff and um uh, like right now I'm going through uh, because I, I, I follow a, a crap ton of people and I, I love following a bunch of people because it makes everyone happy and doesn't cost me nothing. <laughs> and so um, the uh, – yeah, let me see. Uh, Grant Imahara, Max Landis, uh, Dr. Kiki, a few friends of mine. Oh, a lot of the same uh, people I do. <laughs> What's that? You follow a lot of the same people I do. Oh, of course. Yeah, we're all following the same folks. Scott Johnson, uh, <laughs> Neil course. Gaiman. Um, Adam Savage, and uh, and of course all of our Diamond Club friends and family. Sure. So you can't you can't pick out a favorite quite yet, or? No, I really can't because <laughs> I like them all for different reasons, right? right? Like if I want just just rando outrageous noise, you know, I love 
watching Max Landis, you know, run his mouth off all crazy. Right. If I want, um, uh, there's there's one or two guys that I follow, uh, and of course, uh, th there's one guy, and I can't access his name right now. I apologize, but I started following him a while ago, and he always tweets in bursts of four or five, and it's always found articles that that he uh, uh, he's run across, and they're always exquisite. Like almost every time he tweets, I'll uh, I'll end up. Um, Rats, R A T Z. I apologize, uh, R A T Z two or something like that. Uh, I I can't remember it off offhand. But anyway, I'd love running across his stuff. Oh, that's that sounds awesome. I'll have to, I'll have to check some of those out. You, you rattled off a lot of stuff I follow, but not all of it. So it's it's always interesting to 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 look at more. I I always end up paring my my list down though, because I I find that I you know just my taste change or maybe somebody was less interesting than I thought they would be, you know? So. Plus also, I'm sure I'm guilty of it. You know, a lot of times uh, I'll, I'll, I'll spend a lot of time responding to people on Twitter all day long, but I won't just tweet random stuff until the end of the day when it's sort of that, that magic last half hour before you go to bed and you're like, ah, oh, who cares? Let me just, you know, uh, chit chat about X, Y, or Z and then call it a night. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I, well, I live less, less publicly like that though too as far as my thoughts you know i don't necessarily just put stuff out on twitter any any time I, I i think about it i'd use it a lot of the same way as for for communication or or just responding to somebody or you know once in a while i'll have something that put out, but... like like the brevity of twitter allows me a level of engagement that i can't do with anything else like if you want to talk to me on the phone that means i have to stop whatever i'm doing at right. this minute and talk to you which is highly inefficient if you send me an email you're going to be tempted to give me the full story and you're going to want me to write more than a if i if you were to write me a three page you know epic of why you needed my help on x y or z and i responded with 140 characters of like uh you know try reading this book lol click then that would be a rude email. But something about Twitter allows me to just give those short responses and it's appropriate, which is why I hate to say it, but at this moment, to get my attention, you better than calling me, better than emailing me, better than anything is send me an at reply, not even a DM, because the DMs I get too much and, and I don't right. get the alerts on. Just send me an at reply and I'll and you'll probably get a response, you know, if I'm awake and conscious within an hour. Yeah, you know, for me it's actually the same way because um it's it's become more of the default uh, messenger, right? Like because well, not everybody uses Hangouts. It, it's it's or, almost you know. as though the world entered a giant chat room. And I've so said this. in a chat room, <laughs> I've okay. said exactly this. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, and 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 in fact, uh, that's that's. I, I have to find. Hold on. Let me see if I can find. I don't think I'll get in trouble for uh, for sharing this. But I uh, uh, tweeted. I tried to introduce Teller to Twitter. <laughs> Uh, like seven, eight years ago. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go back. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, here we go. Um, oh, dog on it. <laughs> Texas barbecue. Ba, ba, ba. I, I can't find it, but basically, I'm like, hey man, there's this thing called t uh, Twitter, and I think you dig it. It's like a slow motion chat room that you can participate in, slow it's motion. real valuable. And he wrote <laughs> back, like, Brian, I am so crazy busy. Uh, uh, oh, here we go. I, whatever it was. Uh, uh, hey, Teller, are you a fan doing the Twitter.com thing yet? I tried to hold off against it, but now that I'm tied to the internet video scene where everyone is already doing Twitter, I'm seeing the potential of it. It's basically a slow motion, large scale chat room where each person can decide what part of the conversation they want to hear and what uh, and other people can decide whether they want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> By the way, the best part is everything's searchable. <laughs> it's cool that you get to pick the 50 or so people you'd really like to know what they're up to, blah, 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 blah. And uh, anyway, um, and so I share them with <laughs> with my Twitter handle, and he responds like, "I'll look into it." But Brian, I have absolutely no time to devote to any form of chit chat. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. And so, so of course, he joins Twitter and becomes massively popular. Yeah, of course. That's, no, I, I've totally described it as a, an opt in chat room, right? Because you you have to pick the people that you're opting into their part of the the chat room or the, to, to see their whatever, you know, but that's, that's exactly and that, and what that's, that's positive and negative, right? Because right. the positive is that we get to, you know, kind of uh, filter out stuff we don't want to hear. But the negative is that it makes it more possible than ever to live inside your own bubble. You know, it's like, I, I very rarely, I really don't like to mute or, or block anyone no. because to me, you know, I've seen what happens when you wrap yourself inside your own little bubble and you shape your own reality. Like I want to hear everybody's voice. 
Uh, in fact, I believe I've only blocked five people ever in the history of Twitter. Wow. And, uh, and, and, and I felt super guilty each time on those because I made Boy. them an unperson and I felt filthy. That's, uh, that's like that episode of uh, uh, Black Mirror. Uh, you know, yeah. block. Yep. That's. <laughs> I. I don't think I. I don't think I could bring myself to block anybody now that I've seen that episode. It's like because it feels the same. I mean, granted, it's just Twitter. There are bigger things in in the world that that could go wrong. But that you know, that's kind of a big thing to ruin someone's day like that. So, but yeah. <laughs> well, so if you were to get a superpower, you're a fan of comic books and superheroes right you're gonna go see age of ultron um if sure. you were if you were given a superpower what what power would it end up being and and what's the first thing that you would do with it oh my god i, I i've thought about this i've thought about this at length i, think I mean we all i have. had the genie <laughs> conversation over and over and over again and uh and i i want to say around uh, eighth grade i figured out that the perfect, the best power in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You could cheat and go, you know, Silver Surfer and wield the power cosmic, but that's like you're just God at that point, you know? Yeah. Uh, anything above Silver Surfer is cheating and not interesting to me. Superman to me, cheat, the too. most interesting <laughs> one is uh, is the Invisible Girl because there was a – there was a, or Invisible Woman as she eventually became told sure. uh, called. But there was a sequence in Fantastic Four where she turns into this like crazy version of herself called Malice and she tore the rest of the team up. Like she has the I... like she took down She Hulk by just making a force bubble around her head and then suffocating her and then down she went. Oh. You know the uh, uh, Mr. Fantastic wraps his body around her and she just makes a force field in the shape of a spiked like a morning star mace and just jabs it out and stabs them all to hell. Oh. You know and it's like uh, and, and so and plus effectively by riding force fields she could fly stop bullets, uh, do all that stuff. She could kill anyone. Think about this, man. You could kill anyone just by making a bubble inside their stomachs and then bloop, expanding until they tear apart. Right, or uh, in their blood, blood vein. Or, you know, like yes, a little blood or, or, or a little golf ball-sized thing in their, in their throat, right? Yep. So you got the lethal. But realistically, I'm never going to use any of that. What would be extremely valuable is because she can become invisible and she can make other things invisible by touching them, right? So, so immediately, I've got the most valuable job in all of medicine because I just walk into a room, lay my hand on some dude's belly, make it invisible so we can see the tumor, right, uh, collect right. my $100,000 and go on to the next gig. Yeah. That's – I've thought way too much about this. That's, that's safer than a CAT scanner, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, and then everyone dies of of cosmic radiation from me. Well, yeah, whatever. There's <laughs> give and take, right? There's give and take. So. <laughs> well, in, in the same vein, um, you know, you're also a fan of science fiction, I'm sure. So if you could move to any planet, you know, real or imaginary, because I know weird things you've probably thought about moving to real planets. Um, what what would it be, and uh, what would you live in? You know, what kind of house would you have, or what would it look like? Man, we talked about all the different possibilities just recently on Weird Things, and I loved, 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 loved uh, Andrew Maine's idea that uh, that we could have a collection, a cluster of of uh, asteroids, and each one its own independent world. You know, on this asteroid, we all pretend to be Harry Potter land. It's Hogwarts. Oh, yeah, that was a good episode. Ast yeah, yeah, exactly. I I love that idea. I I will say. I, I will say, maybe because it's so close, maybe because I could see it almost happening, I, I would love to die on Mars. That would be unreal yeah. and wonderful, and I would love to do that. Yeah, as far as real planets, like, I think Mars would be cool, because I, I already actually kind of like the desert. Like, I like drier, you know, climates anyway, so. So that kind of thing wouldn't bother me, although it is extremely dry, so we might have to work on that a little bit, but, you know. Just uh, fling, fling a few thousand comets at it and, you know, let it rain water, whatever. And you know, I'd, I'd be fine to live in... It's a fixer-upper, you know, right. I, I, I'm with you. I'd be fine to live in some sort of hab for, for a long time, though, too, you know. Uh, a la uh, Futurama, you know, where they had the dome uh, when he's on the moon and the guy's farming the, the, the beetle cow thing. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, something, yeah, I could live in that. That'd be cool. I'm okay with that, too. Yeah. Right. Oh, that sounds, that's a lot. I mean, of course, there's a million sci-fi planets that'd be cool to live on, but I don't know. I always find the real planets to be more interesting to think about. There's more. Yeah, but weirdly, it's like the, um, it's like the limitations are what make them so valuable. You know what I mean? Ex exactly. Yeah. There's there's more that you have to kind of work with to to, to make it happen. So well, that's pretty cool. Well, I'll, we'll get into some some 
you specific questions since I asked you all the general ones. And you're so far, you're passing with flying colors. Uh, if you didn't know you're being graded, you are. Yes. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I <laughs> um, so we got a couple ones. Uh, you do you, you like to play video games, of course. Uh, and when you get time for another Brian plays, what what game is kind of like on the top of your wish list to, to do for that? It's tough because I, when you play a game in front of an audience, you're you're having a fundamentally different experience than when you play just for yourself. You know, it's uh, when you play just for yourself, it's a switch off moment. Uh, I think I would like to play some more. I, I ought to get back to Far Cry 4 mm. and jump in there. To be honest, uh, I'm so wrapped up in Hearthstone and Heroes of the Storm. Uh, I, I should play Heroes of the Storm for an audience just to get graded on my techniques. Oh, um, I so want to get uh, into that game. <laughs> Wait, have you not played it yet? Or? No, no, I'm not in the beta or anything. And and it's one of those things, too, where it's like, oh, my God, it'd be so fun to play. I do not have the time, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'll tell you what. What you need is kids to play for you because, like, Penny will just, uh, you know, she's not great, but she's good enough. I'm like, yeah, level that up a few levels. I'll be <laughs> back tomorrow. Right. I would totally do that with Diablo, though. <laughs> See, I, yeah, play, sure. I play so many Blizzard games. Like, I play Hearthstone. I play Diablo. I play StarCraft on occasion, although I'm not very good at it. And, you know, never got into World of Warcraft, uh, although I did play the Warcraft series since... You know, oh my god, back in the day, yeah. yeah. I remember that was the first uh, real-time strategy. I remember playing Dune 2. Do you remember the, the, the Dune 2, I believe, is the prototype of all current real-time strategy games. And I remember thinking, wow, if you could play Dune 2 against another person, that would <laughs> yep. be the best game ever. And then next year, Warcraft comes out, and I'm like, holy crap, that's well, amazing. And to me, what they did for real-time strategy is amazing. Because, like, you know, Warcraft 1 to Warcraft 2 was like, Okay, we figured out what we're doing. We're improving the graphics. It's still just two of the basically the same thing. When they moved up to StarCraft after that, it like blew real time strategy out of the water because it was three completely it, it, yeah, different exactly. races. You had three fundamentally because, uh, you know, orcs versus uh, uh, humans was essentially two different skins for the, the same right. game. Now, I will say I played so much Warcraft 2. Like, we oh, yeah. played, I played eight. A lot. <laughs> Eight player land games, we would set it always to the lowest uh, speed setting because to us it was like this is not a Twitch game. This is a game about strategy, which means like, – and we would play four-hour legendary like matches. And stuff. That we, it was unreal. And uh, by the time StarCraft came out, I remember buying it, playing it, and saying, yes, this is in every way superior to Warcraft 2. Also, I think I'm done playing Warcraft 2. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. I'm uh, – I'm, I'm 31 so i'm yeah i'm just his age you're um but like eight years old are you 40 yet you're not 40 you're 30 yeah, or yeah. something yeah i'm 40 are you I'm really 40 oh, yeah okay. that's I, I have a bad memory for this stuff okay so so yeah time wise it was for me the warcraft 2 for you was St starcraft for me you know playing playing oh yeah that yeah on, so on you, you would have been like roughly in college or no, uh, no or, i was still in late high school, high school. Yeah, what's that? I was still in high school at, at that point. Yeah, so and we we would play Quake Two at 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 school. We had it loaded on the land, and we got teachers to play with us. It was <laughs> those are the good times, man. Uh, when you had to go to a school, is the only place you could. Yeah, yep. It was it was awesome being a geek that in the nineties. So. <laughs> yep. But uh, you also do uh, some strange magic, as bizarre magic, as you uh, so put it. What is the first magic trick you ever performed for an audience? Ooh, good question. Um, I, I believe if you want to count my family, when I was eight years old, I got a magic set for Christmas and I immediately <laughs> tried all the tricks without reading the directions and screwed them all up. And my brother cried. It was epic. Uh, and then <laughs> I, I went to college and my friend Gordon showed me a magic trick, wouldn't tell me how it was done. And out of fury, I was like, I'll show you. I'll be a better magician than you ever were. <laughs> and uh, uh, tried to learn magic. And I would say, I mean, there were times I did stuff for audiences, small, small audiences, but I remember my first paid gig was doing close-up at a restaurant, walking around and uh, doing card tricks while people waited for their steak at Dan McCluskey's Steakhouse in Austin, Texas. And uh, I remember, you know, dressing up in my Sunday best and being just, uh, you know, terrified the entire time. <laughs> No, you know, close-up magic is my favorite kind of magic. I, I actually did work in a magic shop in high school for a while. 
Um, no kit. Oh yeah, it was. So I never got you know super into it, but but I can definitely do some false shuffles, and I can you know I can do a French drop like nobody's business. So you know, <laughs> right on. It's always good for little kids and stuff. But but yeah, uh, close up magic has always been like just the stuff that I I am amazed at because you're you're you know three feet away from the guy like he cannot mess up at all, or I cannot mess up at all if I'm the one doing it. You know and. It was uh, well, and the funny was, part to me is that you can mess up a lot. And as long as you just, you know, keep everything moving, nobody will ever even know. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You just pretend like you're not messing up at, at all. That's <laughs> oh, that card flying over there. Yeah. This is the flying card trick. You didn't see that one. Right. All right. That's the, uh, they call that the Texas sharpshooter fallacy, which is defining <laughs> the target after you've taken the shot. You exactly. know, it's, it would, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, well, we actually have a uh, a special. I don't I don't normally take uh, special request questions, but I got a couple from somebody who had a birthday yesterday. Who's a big fan? Uh, it was Tanky's birthday. Oh, so Tanky is a national treasure of Chat Realm. Uh, I I can never thank Tanky, Tanky enough for putting together here. I'm going to play it for you for our fantastic <laughs> rendering of the uh, the BB Live Studios oh, yeah. from the beginning of uh, of Night Attack. Uh, that is fantastic. Happy birthday, Tanky! You are truly one of the best and brightest of Chat Realm. Well, yeah, and since uh, since timing didn't really work out yesterday, I figured I'd make sure I got both of her questions in in for today. Um, so, cons the the first one is considering you live a life that is uh, very close to your fan base, uh, and they can interact with you on such a personal or you know familiar basis. Uh, have you ever wondered oh, what it would be like if you were uh, more of a, a personality who distances himself from everybody, more of an introvert than than being an extrovert, but still trying yeah. to live this life? I, I can't I can't even imagine what it's like to be anyone other than me. That's really <laughs> difficult. Uh, you know, that's that I am aware that there are people I, we all have or here's what I suspect. If I was the type of person that that wanted to shy away and had a problem, you know, being out there, putting themselves out there, then I suspect that I would have another set of gifts that I would be able to take advantage of. When I when I decided to quit my day job to do magic, it, it was sort of this cold assessment where it's like, well, what do you want to do, Brian? Well, my first choice is I want to do 3D modeling and animation. I want to make video games. And in this dialogue with myself, it was like, well, what are the important gifts that would make for a good person at that? And it's like, well, he'd have to be super patient, able to handle tedium, He'd have to be comfortable sitting in a chair for 14 hours at a time. He'd have to be precise and, and fastidious and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, what are your natural gifts? I'm like, oh, I don't mind talking to people. I don't mind putting myself out there. I don't mind being outrageous. I, I don't mind trying crazy things, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like looking at it, I was like, well, your natural gifts say you have to be a magician. And I remember thinking, <laughs> yeah, but magic is kind of dorky. And I don't want to, you know, it's like, but video games are so much cooler than magic. And Magicians it's like, well. don't get laid. No. <laughs> yeah, right. And so it was this, um, it was this conscious decision where it's like my natural gifts seem to point me towards this, uh, this other place. So that, that became where I went. Yeah. You know, I actually went through something a little bit similar, but not on purpose necessarily like I got a computer when I was 10 right so I've been doing hardware and programming I started programming when I was 12 and it's been a hobby like it's been something that I just really enjoy doing and I've always like kind of wanted to do something with computers but never really like tried to get into it and as soon as I did like I love going to work like like I go to work and and maybe it's not the project that I would want to do but it's the work that I want to do you know it, it doesn't it's not a big deal that I'm not creating, you know, the next Twitter or whatever. I don't care. But Well, it's like whether or not you want to start, you know that you're only a few minutes away from hitting the zone, from being in the groove of creating and of uh, and, and and there you know, you can find that moment even I remember realizing that the days at my job running concessions at the movie theater, the days I was engaged and I was like, let's hammer, let's tackle this line. When I'd be into it, I, I you could hit that zone no matter what you do. Uh, but when it's something that is, you know, again, speaks to your natural gifts, I think it's a lot easier and a lot more rewarding. Yeah, yeah, definitely. One, and like I said, I go into work being able to solve the problems that I love to. That's like I'm one of those nerds that likes to solve puzzles, you know. And and programming is kind of just a giant puzzle of pieces that it mm, really is. I fit. tried to explain explain that to uh, Penny about uh, uh, you know math problems and algebra. I'm like, it's all just logic puzzles. Hey, if you like ever... those when we don't call them math, right? It's the same, just calling it math. No, if she's ever interested in programming, I can I can point her to some some you know kind of learning geared. Uh, they're actually more game 
type t tutorials that kind of get you into to having some fun with programming that's couldn't hurt so if you ever if she ever shows interest just let me know <laughs> oh yeah absolutely i'll do that yeah so we got one more uh tanky question what's your favorite girly drink i know you drink a lot of beer on night attack but uh, you got to have some fruit ones once in a while right my favorite girly <laughs> drink because when it, all, right, all right so if i'm drinking to impress so that's the opposite girly drink is like your 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 secret you know secret shame uh but if anyone's looking I always have like a a gin and club soda or a, a gin and tonic. Um, girly drink, though. Ugh, ugh. The problem is I don't really like sweet drinks. I have um, to. <laughs> but are you the same way? For the most part, yeah. I mean, once in a great while, like even Captain and Coke is, you know, pretty sweet for me. So, like, you know what? If I'm gonna do a, a girly drink, can... it's gonna be it's gonna be a a, a Coke and um, Bacardi Lemon, the flavored oh, okay. rum. Because, because somehow magically, when you mix Coke and Bacardi Lemon, it tastes like Sprite. That's yeah. No, I I can see that. I would say once in a while, I can I can go for like a, a pina colada or even like a like margaritas are great. I like lime margaritas, which I don't hey, even I, consider I, that. I'll, a I'll do like drink. A, a vodka Collins as well, oh, or, yeah. or a, a margarita. Yeah, yeah, margaritas uh, aren't I'll, exactly actually. Girly, you know what? But... I don't know if this counts as a girly drink, but uh, in Texas. There's a Tex-Mex chain called uh, Trudy's, and they have a Mexican martini. It's the best in the biz, man. It really? is good, good, good. Hmm. They cut you off. They cut you off after two. <laughs> like no matter, no matter what, if you have two Mexican martinis, you are not allowed to have anything else that evening. Nice. <laughs> no, you know we went to this place in uh, in, in Pennsylvania. It was actually a hotel we were staying at, and. Uh, the bartender that my wife got an apple martini and I I'm fine like I like martinis anyway like just normal you know vodka martini um but she's like oh you got to try this I'm like I don't like sweet you know apple -y drink like that no I tried it it was the best like it was like taking a bite out of a granny smith apple it wasn't sweet it was like you felt healthy <laughs> not, not even healthy necessarily but it was like a real apple taste it wasn't that nasty syrupy crap you know <laughs> But, sure, sure. Yeah, so the, if you can find the right one, that's probably about as girly as I'll go. But <laughs> right on. Well, excellent. Thank you so much for for joining me and answering some some fun questions. Wait, is, it, is it already happened? That was so it's, fast. Yeah, that's it's. Uh, I actually asked you. I asked you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you uh, me. You asked me to death. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I actually asked you an an additional question for for you know normally I ask three uh, for for just the guest, but I think you had a couple so. Uh, yeah. right well, happy birthday, Tanky, and I guess this works Definitely. out good because I'm supposed to uh, uh, go force feed medicine to my <laughs> ailing two-year-old. Oh, that sounds like fun. So uh, uh, people can find you on Twitter at uh, Schwood, S-H-W-O-O-D, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we recently updated uh, Schwood.com, the website, so that's S-H-W-O-O-D.com, and you'll get links to all this stuff. And I just found out that uh, uh, Hacking the System is now airing on National Geographic in Europe this month. Awesome. Uh, I got reports from... Both uh, the the Holland, I guess, uh, from Amsterdam and from the UK, and uh, dude, yeah, everybody check it out. So, how does that if the, if the ratings over there go well, does that all kind of pull back to the ratings over here, so that you'll maybe get another season or something? Or it's all, it's all voodoo to this guy. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're eagerly awaiting word back, but uh, but you know, even if even if they decide to go another direction, you know, lots of exciting stuff that we're that we're brewing in the in the oh. in the the secret. Uh, Skunk Works over at uh, Schwood.com. Awesome. So that that sounds like a lot of fun. So, <laughs> all right. Anything else you got to plug besides uh, website and Twitter? Nope, nope, nope. Uh, you know, of course, uh, Scam School and uh, Night Attack and uh, uh, Cord Killers and weird things and uh, and ScamStuff.com. Gear for the modern world. Scams. All right, all right. Oh, uh, speaking of uh, Night Attack uh, movie draft, uh, what do you what are your thoughts? Uh, still think DCNS is going to kill I, I, I think I think that we're going to have to airing have an airing out of our grievances <laughs> on uh, Tuesday. Wait, like, uh, like. It was amazing to watch Tom just run the table. Like he won the game so hard that it became not fun for everyone else, <laughs> and uh, and it and it means that the game's broken and we need to fix the game. So we'll figure that out. Yeah, that's well. We we actually uh, my, myself, Tom Gurky, Seb Gons, Chimera, and uh, JC get together and we do a, a, a we've done the last two movie drafts together. So uh, we did ours, and uh, I got to pick up uh, Avengers for fifty seven, which I was really wow. happy about. Yeah, so um, that's man, that's huge. Yeah, I got a couple good ones. It, it, ours actually is. I think we we both kind of, we all kind of beat each other up enough to 
to get it fairly even, but you know, yeah, it's, no, it's such that's, a fun uh, game. Uh, that's that's a that's a whole issue. That's a thing. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for 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 joining me, Brian. Um, we'll see you, you know, Tuesday night for some, or no, Monday night first for some cord killers. So, uh, and you can Heck watch, yeah, definitely, and you can watch more of these interviews of the members of Chat Realm at tinvec.com slash dd. There's uh, you know, podcast RSS feeds and iTunes subscription links and all that stuff as well. So we will uh, see you next time, um, probably next Saturday. I don't know, sounds like a good time. Maybe. <laughs> bye bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>